That's some Viking music, don't it? <laughs> yeah, gotta get it out the mud. That's the only way to win. Who am I to point the finger like I never ever seen? Been through the ups and downs like the letter in. They don't let you through the door. Better kick it again. Cause that's the only way to win. That's the only way to go. Gotta get it out the mud. Gotta get it out the flow. Cause that's the only way to go. Let's go. See, lights out. What's going on, good people? How y'all doing today? It is a great day. It is a Wednesday, and I'm here with Shooting Lights Out, but we have a special episode because guess what? I won't be the one doing the main talking today. Shout out, Victor. What's going on, V Lock? How you doing? I'm glad you're here. Share this out because I'm this is not my episode. I'm gonna do I got some stuff I'm talking about, but it's not my episode. Ladies and gentlemen, if you notice the title, the title says the Co Sports Takeover. That's because Mr. Co Sports himself, the EP of all EPs, he has something that he want to get off his chest when it comes to the NBA. And I said, I will give you my platform to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Co Johnson. Ah, uh, how you doing? How you doing, everybody? Thank you, Playmaker. I appreciate uh, being on the platform, and I also appreciate being on once again with you. Uh, thank you so much for allowing me the platform of uh, the uh, of shooting lights out to do this. No problem, man. You you, you say you have some stuff you want to get off your chest. I'm like, all right. You know what? Yes. I think yes. I can make I can make that happen for you. I can do that. Uh, you want to sh- shout out to your brother there? You know, v Lock is in the chat. Oh yeah, definitely. Let me do a cool, cool McCain style. So, what's up to my man, the Ed McMahon of the Snowman in the Morning program, the one, the only Victor? <laughs> what's up, Victor? Oh man, hey, shout us out. We are, we are live on X, we are live on Facebook, we are live on LinkedIn, and we're live on YouTube. So share it out. Let's get people in here because we're going to talk some basketball. And doing so, there's only one thing I got to do because I always start off with this, and it's the white way to start it off. Mr. Cole Johnson, mm-hmm. I got to go around the hardwood, sir. So, okay. I got to give out some news and notes what's been going on in the world. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. All right. Now, some news has came out about some stuff in the All Star Weekend. I want to focus on the celebrity game, Cole Johnson. The celebrity game, okay. And it's not those who are going to be playing in the celebrity game I want to focus on. We know who the coaches are for both teams. You ready for this? Please unveil. The head coach for one team is Stephen A. Smith. And guess who he has as assistant coach is going to be? Little Wayne, that's right, Tucci, and Aja Wilson. Okay, okay Aja Wilson, I like. Mr. Lean Sipper, that, that, thinks, that, that thinks his face is a, uh, is a canvas. No. I mean, uh, the only thing he knows how to do is light up a blunt or, or a joint and drink from a styrofoam cup. <laughs> Come on. Lord have when, mercy. Hey, when I saw this, when I saw this on X on ESPN, I was like, "Yeah, I gotta put this on here because I know Cole's gonna have something to say about this." So I had to put it over here. Little Wayne, Wheezy F, baby, and the F is for forgetting every single thing you know about basketball. Lord have mercy. Hey, I told you this is not my episode. Okay, this is not my episode. <laughs> <laughs> this might be my show and my platform, but it is not my episode, okay? <laughs> that's that's the coaching staff for one team. You ready for the other team? Yes. Guess who he's going up against? Oh, Lord, Shannon Sharp. I should have known. <laughs> and these assistant coaches are going to be Mr. Curtis 50 Cent Jackson and Peyton Manny. Lord have mercy. 
Peyton Manning. I have a lot of respect for him. He's a wonderful athlete when it comes to football. Now, he may have seen a lot of basketball. He may know some. I mean, he is a tall guy, but come on, really? And then 50 Cent. The only thing he could teach of shooting is how to avoid bullets. Lord. Wow. I mean, he did get shot up nine times before his career took off. I mean, that's all yeah, that he could teach. Yeah, this is one of them episodes I already know. I'm glad. I'm glad I got me a smoothie right now. <laughs> it's gonna be one of them episodes. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna enjoy it. I'm going to enjoy this. But yeah. And the, oh, 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 oh I, now I get it. I get it. Okay, so, 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 Shannon or Shay Shay. Oh, so basically, basically, they sound like it's going to be a club Shay Shay interview with. Oh, I get it. It's going to be two club Shay Shay interviews with Peyton Manning and Fifty Cent. Okay, I got it. Okay, now that makes sense. Okay, cool. Now, now I got it. Now I got it. Cause, cause Sharp ain't t- he ain't coaching nothing basketball related. It, it's first take. Mm, I, yeah, I know. I know it's 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 a first take takeover of the celebrity game. I I know. Oh my gosh, this is great. I just want to focus on the coaching, the coaching stuff, because I was just like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Steven ain't going to coach one team. Sheriff's not going to coach another team. Okay. Oh, we're gonna put Little Wayne as an assistant coach. We gonna put Fifty Cent as an assistant coach. Adrian Wilson. That's the only legit. <laughs> Basketball, anything of either of the six coaches, the two head and the and the four assistants that you got is Asia Wilson. <laughs> oh my gosh, man, that was great. I had to put that in there. I had to. I had no choice. Oh my gosh, thank you. I needed this laugh because this is ridiculous. <laughs> so okay, so 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 we're gonna have on one side, uh, Lil Wayne. Uh, smoke, smoking a blunt and sipping on lean, and on the other side we're gonna have two uh two club Shay Shay interviews on court. Okay, all right. You might have more than that because because if I remember sorry, but like I do believe Jennifer Hudson is one of the players. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, you might have multiple interviews. You got a point there. Lord have mercy. They're throwing that out there. <clears throat> Jennifer Hudson is one of the players. I did, I did see that part. <laughs> I didn't know Jennifer Hudson knew anything about basketball. So I know I know she likes it, but I don't know if she plays it. <laughs> I, mean, I say I say that I say that because she has been spotted lately. I think in Bulls games with Common. <laughs> oh oh, m- memo to uh, Jennifer Hudson: Get away from that serial data when you can. Jeremy Sharp, Fiddy, and Peyton Man. Do he any of them play basketball? See, this is when I. W- yes, yes, your, your hometown girl, Jennifer Hudson. Yes. Yes, you heard correctly, Victor. Yeah, Jennifer Hudson is one of the players. Mm-hmm. She'll be playing in this game. But yeah, uh, oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, memo to Jennifer Hudson. Um, run from that serial dado. He'll probably. He'll he'll probably do the he'll probably do the light thing on you. There are times when you need someone, and then you want to run from them, and then you'll be like a like, like Dream Girls, singing. And I am telling you, I'm not going. All of a sudden, because of that ball headed fool who can't seem, seem to settle down with anybody. I mean, the dude was dating Serena Williams and Angela Ra. Do I need to go for a fall? Nah, nah, we gonna, we gonna move that's what on. I thought. That's we what gonna I thought. move on on that way. Right? That, that's, that's what I thought. Jarrell and B, it will be out for four weeks after having B procedure on his meniscus that suffered in the game against Golden State. There has been some backlash to this because. The whole 70, the 65 rule of thing, Cole Johnson, where a player had to play a minimum 65 game to be considered oh, for postseason oh, awards. Right. I haven't talked about that yet. Thank you for that, sir. Oh, and then Mr. Uh, Mr. Vicala, uh, Otunga was never married to Hudson. They were just they were just engaged for years. They drug it on. 
obviously, uh, obviously Jennifer thought David just wasn't bringing home the bacon and just dumped him on the side of the road like a piece of trash. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, you said Embiid. Okay. Yep. Uh, okay. Um. All right. That's not like it's not. I need to give you a close up on this one. You better go win. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. Um. I, I want to. I, I want to focus on the the other the the other um figure for a second. Uh, Kendrick Perkins. Now, last year you lobbied hard to get this guy elected as that last year's MVP. You felt as though that Nikola Jokic didn't deserve to win it, and then Jokic decides to go on and play the best basketball he's ever played and bring home a championship to Denver, the first in their history. Now, I hope that award-winning performance of of campaigning for Joel Embiid was worth it because this is why you should never elect him as MVP. Is he d- d- does he have a game? Yes. Uh is is he is he able to execute things on the court? Most certainly. I just had a meeting with one of my staff members and we talked about Joel Embiid and he said the same thing that I was thinking when it came out of his mouth about Joel, which was, quote, he does well in the regular season, but when it comes to May, he mails it in. Close quote. Now, I thought I wrote that and sent it to him for him to say. Look, I get that injuries happen. I get you need to heal. And 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 and, and unfortunately with, with Mr. Embiid, he's gonna forever have that face that he formed, I think it was after the 2019 uh was it kind of a semifinals? Yeah, it was 2019, when uh the Raptors eliminated him, where basically he was just looking in the camera like this when he was walking uh, off the court and into yeah. the locker room. The famous Kawhi Leonard ball bouncing all around the yeah, room before it the, drops. Yes, the same game. And and then and you saw just Embiid just looking. It looks like he's going to forever have that look on his face because five years later, he has not advanced anywhere further than that stage in his career. He has gone and been bounced from the conference semifinals all because he can't play at all 82 games. He can't play 70 games. He barely can play 60. He won't play 60 this year. And and he performs Houdini tricks in the playoffs every single May. And now he's trying to perform an earlier trick. Now, now for, before, you, before, you, before you continue on, uh, your brother has to Oh, my mentality, brother. What's up? What's up? My man, why is that FA? I love it. <laughs> oh, oh, um, and now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, memo to the Knicks. Don't sign LeBron James because I do not want to have the biggest cheerleader in all of New York Knicks history to go crazy if you decide to hoist a Larry O'Brien trophy with him as a player. You're talking about now. that that big that big was talking about? <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, now, now back to Embiid. You see, he is the reason why the NBA instituted a 65 game rule, and I think that's a little too lenient. Too lenient? Too lenient. I personally believe that if you're going to be up for an MVP award, it should be at least 70 games you play. Heck, I would want to make it 75. Because I want to eradicate load management from the lexicon, from the thought process, and from the strategies of all of these teams. Because it's become ridiculous now. And I did mention LeBron. I will talk about you later. In I regards mean, to load management. I mean, it's only 20% of, they, from the rule that they gave, they allow you to miss 20%. So that means you got to play 80 I think that's fair, to be honest. Okay, fine, fine. They can miss twenty percent. All right, so that would be so that would basically mean that they could play what sixty 
two or three games. All right, fine. I mean, we're talking an 82 game season. That is a long season. Yes, it is a long season. But they've been doing this since before both of us were born. I mean, this isn't something new. It's not. But we, but I know. I, I, let, me get, let me get myself back on there. Yeah. Please. I get I I I get the gist, okay? You know, Mike Magic, all the all the legends, they played, you know, 70, 80 games. I get it. hmm I mean if, I think Allison will hit a hit a good number. Sixty five. You can miss seventeen games. I'm allowing you to miss twenty percent of the season. Mm-hmm. How you get to that twenty percent, that's up to you. But if you miss more than twenty percent, you mm-hmm. can't get no rewards. And you now, can't get named for an uh, all-NBA team. Now, see, that is where I draw the line. How do you get to missing the 20%? Nah. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. You got to miss the 20% because you injured. Only. Don't give me the, well, we just going to break We're just going to break camp because we decided to take a day off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Oh, oh, you, oh, you thought I was joking. <laughs> yes, he would be a pom-pom waving fool if LeBron James were to become a Nick and they were to win their first NBA championship and hoist their first Le- uh, Larry O'Brien trophy in 51 years. Yes. Oh God, yes. Oh he, uh, I, and, and I am not exaggerating when I say that Wise will become the biggest New York Knicks cheerleader in the history of the organization. This should be one now. They this Knicks look, looking good, even though we ain't gonna talk oh, about the Knicks. You know, I'm, yeah, I'm not gonna cap on the Knicks because they're doing great. It's just I don't want them to have LeBron on the team because so, we wouldn't hit anything. And B, get healthy. Only oh, thing, the only oh, problem oh. I got with you, and B, the only problem I got with you. Why you can't? Why you can't face Jokic in Denver? Oh, 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 Vic. I was battling fools about what you said since March of two years ago. When he, he says, but wait, I thought that B was to be was going to be a beast because he wouldn't be held back by Charmin Harden. <laughs> Please. You and I both know better. Because they both decided to disappear. They decided to disappear faster than you could just say, hey, I no longer want Taylor Swift on my program. And it, I mean, quick, quicker than that. They just simply can't play in May. Both of them can't. And to have the both of them on the same team. And then we got a chance to see this golden egg lane performance last May. When they were up 3-2 and up 6 points with 6 minutes to go on their home court and they couldn't buy a bucket. But meanwhile, they gift wrap Jason Tatum to hit everything but the side of a barn because that's all he could hit the first 3 quarters and 6 minutes. This, this is where I am. But stay on the injury front. Uh, a team that Cole Johnson will be diving into pretty hard later on. Uh, mm-hmm. Happened to lose a key player last night. Oh, here we go again. But another year, another Chris Middleton huge injury. Oh, man. He took a, took a three-point shot, and as you can see here, he landed on Kevin Durant's foot. Twisted his ankle. Did not return to the game. And let's give you a sneak peek. Uh, the Bucks did go on to lose that game in Phoenix last night. So I'm pretty sure Cole Johnson will be saying something about that when we get to that segment about the Milwaukee Bucks. But yeah. So won't get but that yes. There. But thank you for getting that in there. That adds more fuel to my file, y'all. I appreciate that. And we did talk about a news on the All Star weekend with the celebrity coaches. Mm-hmm. And we talked about one of the guys who were as an All Star for the. East when it comes to the uh, Joel Embiid injury, well, we've got his replacement. So, Trey Young and Scotty Barnes are added to the All-Star team on the Eastern team, replacing, as for mentioned, Joel Embiid, and Wise is on uh, 
Julius Randle of the New York Knicks. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. <clears throat> Julius Randle actually decided to show up and play basketball. He was he was voted and he was he he he, he was voted an All Star. Oh my gosh! Will wonders ever cease? He he was voted an All Star, but he's injured, so that's why Scotty Barnes got got in. Well, good job, Scotty. But it but that that's a miracle that Julius Randle decided to be an All Star. And before I go to my to the big news of the day, which I don't think a lot of people have been talking about and should be talking about, speaking mm-hmm. of the All Star, uh, first of all, Doc, thank you for doing the right thing. Appreciate you doing the right thing. You're gonna give your All Star ring and that check to Adrian Griffin because he was the one that was coaching the Bucks to that point where they can be. The supposed oh. coaching team for the Eastern All Stars. So, so Doc's not going to be coaching the All Star game. He's going to be coaching. See, that's a doggone shame. But the but the ring that he the ring that the coaches get and the paycheck they get, he's giving it to Adrian Griffin. I mean, that's admirable. Yes, he's giving it to Adrian Griffin. Uh, his assistant coaches, they not coaching the All Star <laughs> game. They said they said they not going to be coaching the All Star game. How interesting. Oh, I'm sorry. But here's my problem. Okay. What's your problem? Real quick. Yeah, what, what's your problem, sir? Y'all going to tell me. Mm-hmm. Because Joe Mazzula mm-hmm. coached the All-Star game last year. That's right. And that same team is the it's best the team right in the league right, right now. Even yeah, though, best team on all NBA, correct. Even though I had my problems with them last week and that we're going to reiterate Oh, we definitely going to talk about that, yes. But that's because he did it last year. He can't do it again this year. I guess it must be a rule where if it's a rule, you can't you can't coach the All Star two years straight. That's what I was thinking. It must be a rule where you can't coach it two two years in a row. What kind of rule is that? Well, but, see, the NBA has always been a league where they wanted to spread the love. They, they they want to make sure that monopolies don't happen. They want to make sure that 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 we give all of the NBA experience to as many people who can experience it. It would be unfair for the Celtics head coach to do a monopoly in the All-Star game. The fact that I know you as well as I do, the sarcasticness in your voice is just... <laughs> the sarcasticness in your voice is just different. It's just different. <laughs> I just... Look, I didn't, I, I didn't do that was kind of <laughs> oh, you knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. <laughs> that's why you I set me it. up. That's yeah, why I brought this. it up. <laughs> Listen, you set me up. Yeah, I okay. sure did. Because <laughs> I knew it was a rule. I, I heard the rule, and I'm like, that's a stupid mm-hmm. rule. Mm-hmm. Man can't close all side thing because he did it last year, but he's still got the best record. Mm-hmm. If you don't like it, do something about it. Beat him. Which I get. Here's the news I want to get into. Okay. I don't know if you've seen this, Mr. Cole Johnson. All right. ESPN, Fox, Warner uh, Brothers yes. are forming a venture to stream sports service in the United States coming football season. So I guess that means we might be seeing programs like Monday Night Football like anything that Fox does and inside the NBA on one of these streaming platforms now. Is is that what is that what you're saying? Because for those who don't understand, Warner Brothers, they are the parent company of TBS, TNT, and that of the like. Oh. Why well, the thing is so Boston has the best record in the East. But Joe Mazzulla can't coach it because he did it last year. Guess who got the second best record in the East? The yeah. Milwaukee Bucks. The team that fired a guy who started the season 30 and 30. I'm sorry, my bad. <laughs> so that's how I'm Doc sorry. Rivers got that nod. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm and, sorry. When he, and when he heard about it, he just laughed because he was like, that's stupid. Even he, mm-hmm. said, he said, that's just stupid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's what that is. And uh, to answer your question, Mr. Cole Johnson, 
So the things that they got on here, of mm-hmm. course, for the professional football, we're talking NFL and the newly made United Football League. Right. The reign of Johnson. So that would be in the winter of, well, no, I'm sorry, spring of 2025. Okay. Well, it's probably the only good thing he is going to be known for us right now. If y'all get my trip. <laughs> if you smell, we smell pork. One of these days, we gotta get you on Martin's arrest. We gotta get you on Martin's arrest. Basketball, you have the NBA and WNBA, Major League Baseball, hockey, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. College will be on there. Golf will be part of it. Tennis as well. Cycling, Mm -hmm. soccer, combat sports like UFC. UFC, yeah. And also your automotive sports uh, like Formula <clears throat> One and NASCAR and stuff like that. Well, I'll be a part of this. <laughs> That's why I love you, Wise. You and I are right here with that. Yes, sir. Hey, <sighs> you wasn't available when we were, when we recorded. <laughs> hey. Neither was this guy right here was available when we recorded, all right? As I told y'all, if anybody just want to hop on, because this is what we finna go in. Well, 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 guess what, though? Guess what, though? As good as your boy is when it comes to hosting, I peeled back a few layers. I ain't even pulled back all the layers, so there's still some juice on the bones, okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. But that's Monday. Monday. Well, mm-hmm. I know Cool ain't gonna be, he ain't gonna be able to do it on Mm-hmm. But why it's Monday, be ready. There's more now, layers to peel back, okay? I now, if it's, now if, it's, if it's Monday afternoon, I'm there. Talk, talk to the can about that. All right. So, all right. We're going to keep going. Now, I'm not going to take a break here on here because we're going to keep going because okay. after mm-hmm. when I get to my first break, this one is going to be the actual cold sports takeover because I'm just going to say a few things and let Cole go off. Because there's some things you want to go off on. But I got to get McCoy's basketball in here. Okay. Now, Mr. Okay. Cole Johnson, Johnson you, I don't know if you catched last last week's show. Mm-hmm. But we had a record number of top 10 upsets in a month. In one month. And that's the beginning of the 2024 year. Yeah, it's been highly chaotic. Yeah, so we talked in 24 Top 10 upsets in the month of January. <clears throat> Only one of those 24 upsets came against another team that was actually ranked. Hmm. So 23 of the upsets came with a team unranked. Unranked. <laughs> now, if you know it's 24 of those, that's how many upsets ha- actually happened in the whole entire month. Hmm. All right. So I did that, right? Talked about it, went over it. And then, and by the way, when I did it, it was actually the beginning. It was actually February 1st when I did it, I think. Mm -hmm. And guess, no, February 2nd when I did it. And guess what happened February 1st? Another upset. (laughs) Nebraska decided to take down number six, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. The first day of February. (laughs) The first day of February. So we come off of record city month in January, and we're going to begin the month of February with another time. Mm-hmm. And then guess what? We only this is the seventh day, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, we had two more top ten upsets. <laughs> hmm. We had two more top ten upsets. We're we seven days in. We already up to three. <laughs> Kansas State took down Kansas in the Sunfire Battle in overtime, and then. You see that at the bottom there, Mr. Johnson? Oh yes, the team that the team that decided to dismantle Duke, they decided to take it on the chin at home to Clemson. You know the craziest that is, and thank you to ESPN because ESPN loves giving me stats that I don't think people be knowing. Clemson has played at Chapel Hill sixty-two times. Guess how many times they have won in Chapel Hill? Once. That's the second time. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Twice. <laughs> That's the second time Clemson has ever won at Chapel Hill. <laughs> and it comes against the Carol the Tar Heel being ranked three. Mm-hmm. The second time they beat UNC in Chapel Hill. The second time they have ever beaten UNC in Chapel Hill. The Tar Heels are ranked third. Wow, that's funny. <laughs> and the Tar Heels are ranked third. Mm. You can't make this stuff up. Yeah, yeah. The the men's like game said, has been very chaotic. When 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 them brackets come out, y'all have fun because ain't gonna be no perfect bracket. But. I will say though, it's seemingly that that well, at least in the last month, UConn and Purdue they they seem to have settled into things a little That's bit. That's my problem. Yeah, you said UConn, Good gracious. But somebody, uh, mm-hmm. please, somebody please beat UConn. <laughs> somebody please beat them. <laughs> somebody please. What you you don't want them to repeat? Hell no. <laughs> Hell, no, let me do it the right way. Um, hey, Bishop, you want them to repeat? Hell no. Hell no, no, no. Hell to the no. Hell to the no. To the no, no, no. <laughs> oh, man. I'm about to get rid of you, come for me, please. Jeez. Oh, my. What? Here we go. <laughs> I cannot do the wise right now. <laughs> I cannot. You're channeling cool wise. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> I cannot do the wise right now, man. And and once again, I agree with that message wholeheartedly, brother. We here. <laughs> I'm not. Look here. I'm gonna save it for Monday. I'm gonna save. I'm gonna save it for Monday. I'm gonna save it for Monday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say it for Monday because uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna get sidetracked at the wall. I have some important business to take care of real quick here, okay? Let me get on track because I need to dress. I need to dress my men's team, okay? Okay. I gotta talk to the floor. Yes, yes. You said okay. you want to dress the, the gears, okay? So, that's, when, that's, when that's great. That's great. There you go, man. You you beat the blue blood blue bloods. The 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 if I'm not mistaken, isn't in this the Rupert, isn't is, isn't this arena? Let, let me if I'm not mistaken, Kentucky is probably what your second greatest rival in basketball. Tennessee being the biggest. No, reverse that. Or is it or is it reversed? It's reversed. Well, see, there you go. Kentucky's one, Tennessee's two. We'll see. Well, well, there you go. You beat your biggest rival in Rupp Arena. Yeah, that was last Wednesday. Also, and I watched the game. Them boys fold. They they could they could have folded. I mean, they could have legit folded. Cole, they didn't mm-hmm. fold. They did not fold. They kept chipping away, chipping away, got in overtime, and they won it in overtime. Great. Well, see, well, the, well, that's, that's reason to celebrate. And then Saturday came about, and this took place. What type of crap is this? A and M, you would lay an egg in College Station. They had a thirteen. Okay. They had a thirteen point lead and blew it. You lay an egg in College Station, though. They had a thirteen point lead, and Texas A and M came storming back and won. Hmm. Well, so this is why you want to dress them. Okay, I got it. You you went a long way. You didn't have no bad losses. You just didn't have no quad one wins. But you know, you get Kentucky. You knock on Kentucky at Rupp Arena. You are on your way. And you did. You did a great job. You can't well, I mean, get this thing now. Had a 13 point lead and you didn't close the deal. Why I mean, would they do have their resume stamp victory though? I mean, hey. It gets it, it gets a little bigger than beating Kentucky in Rupp Arena, and they were ranked in the top ten when they beat them. And then you followed it up with a loss like this. You had Thursday off. You had Friday off. You went to Texas A and M, and you did that. So, are, are you saying that the Gators are basically back where they started? Yeah. Mm. That's a bad loss. That yeah, was a, that is, that, that's that's a, a twelve that, and eight. That was a twelve and eighteen. 
That is a bad loss. Yeah, that is a bad loss. And you had them down double digits. Hmm. Yeah, had them down double digits. Had them down by six at the half. Yeah, yeah. That's inexcusable. I agree with you. Now, the reason why I'm not going to go off because second year Todd Golden sent second year. He got he got some transfer players that new boys can play. They ain't they ain't stars, but they can play. I watch them. Mm-hmm. I like I like what they do. Mm-hmm. Y'all gotta finish. Y'all gotta learn how to finish games. Young was let one get away at home against Georgia because you had them down eighteen. They came storming back to force and then the double overtime before we actually not took it took it home. Mm-hmm. Y'all gotta learn how to finish games. I thought y'all turned the corner at Kentucky because Kentucky was leading most of the game. But y'all didn't stop fighting. Then you follow that big win with this bad loss. You can't have stuff like that. That win by itself with Kentucky versus everything that y'all did was going to solidify y'all spot in the NCAA tournament. Now you write that because pretty much this loss can just cancel out Kentucky's win. But we haven't played since Cole Johnson. And guess when our next game is? Tonight. Nope. Saturday? Saturday. Hmm. You have a whole week to prepare for number 12. Oh, well, at least they're coming to Gainesville, though. You had a whole week to prepare for these boys. And Bruce Purr is a hell of a coach. Yes, he is. He's always been. I'm, I'm sure, well, Tennessee's doing good now. But I was about to say, I'm sure they would like to have him back at Tennessee. But, uh, nah, they got, they got but, Rick but, Barnes over there. But, 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 yeah, but they're doing better with Rick Barnes, yeah. Handle bit. You get this W. I'm not paying wise no attention. I'm not paying wise no attention. You get this W right here against Auburn on Saturday. You get this W. We can look forward to the tournament. You still got to play games, but not you another quad one win over number twelve. We in good position. All right. This time it'll be have it'll be a home game, but yeah. So I need y'all to take care of that. I need y'all to take care of it. All right. Do that for me. Do that for Gary Nation. We believe in you. We see what we see what we have. <laughs> we can be a tournament team. But I need y'all to play better. All right. I just need y'all to play better. We're gonna take a break. Cause wise is acting fool. <laughs> When we come back, we're going to dive into the NBA. Because mm-hmm. there's some things Coach Johnson need to talk about. Oh, man, why is it too funny? The Playmakers Blog is sponsored by Paramount Plus. Paramount Plus. Mountains of entertainment. So much, so much to stream. From shows and movies you can only catch here on Paramount Plus, whether it be from CBS, BET, Comedy Central, Liquid Loading, and so much more. The new home of Showtime. Watch Showtime original series, movies, and sports when you sign up for Paramount Plus with Showtime. Catch exclusive originals from Paramount Plus such as Star Trek, Strange Wars, The Family Stallones, Halo, and so much more. You also can stream live sports like NFL on CBS, the UEFA Champions League, the Masters, and the SEC on CBS. Paramount Plus, you can stream up to three devices when you create an account. So Paramount Plus, plan starts at $5.99. If you hit that link below, you can get a free trial. Paramount Plus, Mountains of Entertainment. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Into the Net FC. Killing it, Bappe just all of a sudden finally understood his role, and I think he finally understood that everything Killing and Bappe has accomplished already, you know, there is still a hell of a lot of wait, waiting for him in the future. Killing it, Bappe is only 24 years old. He has accomplished so much, and you know what? Kylian Mbappe has not even reached his prime. 
finally seeing, you know, the Marcus Rashford we have been hoping for for such a long time, you know. But, you know, this game, you know, after after, after everything Manchester United has been, you know, doing lately, you know, th this was actually the ultimate test, you know, to see if Manchester United, you know, all of, honestly was all of a sudden for real. I, I explain this. The United States, maybe they have to suffer this loss as a lesson to learn to prepare for the future. Because four years from now, the World Cup is in not one, not two, but three countries. The United States of America, Canada, and Mexico. Into the NetFC is available on all streaming platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and YouTube. Uh, welcome back to Shooting Lights Out, a special Cold Sports Takeover Edition. Man. And there you go, Cole Johnson. And the Wise is in the check, packing the food right now. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't <is like> wrestling. <laughs> talk about something. Let's talk about fishing. Let's talk, talk about fishing. <laughs> What did I do? Playmaker was talking about finishing. Oh, that was classic. <laughs> you ain't slick. Darn you. <laughs> you ain't slick, homie. You ain't slick. Oh, Lord. All right. Now we're going to talk some NBA because there is a couple of things Mr. Cole Johnson want to talk about. The first of which. Mm -hmm. Oh, and by the way, um, y'all did see that promo about the uh, World Cup. Yeah, the World Cup gonna be in your backyard. Why for the final? That might stay. Now, the other stands, they wanna have the finals at that might stay. Mm -hmm. They figured that 80,000 could pack it. So, I guess there you go. All right, we're going to the West Coast. <sighs> because Mr. Cole Jones said he has some, he has some choice words for the uh, Los Angeles Lakers. And I'm gonna set him up. This is how we're going to do it, because I know what please. he wants to talk about. Please, please. Well, the one thing he wants to talk about is uh, the Lakers all of a sudden know how to win games. Yeah. As you can see here, you see they beat Boston. They beat New York, sorry, Wise. And they beat Charlotte. Yes, they did. Uh, yes, people, what you read is correctly. If you saw last week's episode, you know I went in on a certain team. Mm -hmm. Because uh, LeBron James did not play. Anthony Davis did not play. And, uh, yeah, the Lakers decided to beat the Celtics. And then, and then two days later, these two individuals decided to return to Madison Square Garden. Now, the Mecca, it. baby, the Mecca. This is the, this was the uh, injury report going into Boston. You see them top two names right there? Yeah. Whack and whack. But the Lakers did this to the Celtics. Austin Reed dropping 32 points. My fact, every starter in there scored double, double figure, digit, 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 including so. Vanderbilt before he got injured and did not return to the game. And he's still out to this. And he's still out today. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Okay, that's one part of it. The other part is, is what the Lakers have coming. Oh, they actually have, they could actually win four to the next five. Ain't that something? Now, I'm going to turn it over to Coach Johnson <coughs> by saying, give him this camera. Give me this, give me this, give me this, give me this, give me this camera. Lord, okay. <clears throat> Sorry. It was beautiful to hear you, today NBA fan, just saying the same refrain. We haven't seen a 39-year-old perform the way LeBron has. I mean, LeBron, he's putting forth these stats. What has your favorite did at 39? Oh, either he put forth maybe a third of it or he retired. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Victor, you have no sense whatsoever. And, 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 and yes. In understanding that, we get to Boston. And Thursday, he 
and the NBA's version of Mr. Glass decided to miss. And I understand, and I understand NBA Mr. Glass missing because you can count on him to miss about 25 games a year. Hey, he, he, he's doing better. It's only, it's only his fourth game. He missed. That, that, that's what I'm saying. I was, I was going to say, he's, he's actually ahead of schedule. He actually, he's actually trying to prove that wrong. But he just had that, hadn't had the debilitating injury yet where he misses a month. I'm not praying for it. I'm not wishing for it. So don't send any hate mail to Playmaker nor me. I'm just saying read the history. It's there. I digress. And then we get to Yo Kang, which I totally agree with Victor. With the way Yo Kang likes to sell and flop, it might as well be wrestling. Don't you ever sell somebody who just maybe flicked at your at your face as if you got hit? Because I get. I get why you're doing that. It's like what Playmaker said. You ain't slick, son. You know that Dylan Brooks has the propensity to be dirty. And I'm not saying this because I'm not saying that I don't believe he's dirty because he's on my uh, he's on the team I root for. No, I'm saying if the shoe fits, wear it. If the crime if the crime fits, act on it. But don't just be, don't just because when somebody when reaching for the ball does this to you, you go, oh, oh, oh my face, my face, oh I'm hurt. Get out of here. No. No. And you made the mistake of saying out of your mouth, quote, I don't flop. Close quote. You saw a full of for saying that. Full of it. We all know that you can win Academy Awards every... Look, you can put Meryl Streep to shame with the way you act on the court. Because you are more brilliant actor than she is an actress. And that's saying something because she actually has a degree from Yale to prove that she can act. But the reason why I say that the 65 games that you should be mandatorily held to play is lenient is because I want the NBA to have them pick and choose a few amount of games in which they can pull the crap that they did Thursday in Boston, where both AD and LeBron decided to play load management and miss. And why do I say load management? Because the next game was in Madison Square Garden. And, oh, it was an ABC game. Oh, we're ready to go. Negras, please. Load management sucks. And you two are prime examples of that. You two are the latest prime examples of that. But what I loved about the fact that you all decided to miss, you counted that as an L. You counted that Boston game as an L and you got shown up. Because you saw that the supporting cast that you decided to put an hourglass time on it, LeBron, on X. You realize that you do have some talent on the team. It's just that you murky up the waters. This goes to every bronze sexual that is within the sound of my voice. LeBron James is not the greatest player in today's game. He's not the second or the third or the fourth or the fifth or the sixth in today's game. And he's definitely not the greatest of all time. And I don't need to have the four and six record validate that. The fact that he won too many times acts like a ballerina does it for me. Memo. He just gave this man the pretty treatment. Yes, I did. Oh my gosh. Yes, I did. Memo to Genie Bus. It's time you get rid of that dead weight. You can you can say, well, he sells tickets and people come to see him like he did for Kobe during his his last couple of years before he 
did his 60 and retired the very last game of his career. God bless you, Kobe. We love you. We miss you still to this moment. This guy is a mercenary. He's been one for 14 years. I dare say longer because he probably was a missionary, a mercenary even in the last few years as the Cav for the first time. He will want certain players and then when he gets them and they perform not up to his par, he wants to discard them. And I saw a wonderful stat. So, of course, one of his former teammates, Russell Westbrook, and I'll address him a little bit more in detail later down in this episode. He was a former Lakers teammate of LeBron. And when he was a Laker, he scored, I think it was 18 and a half points a game. He pulled down seven rebounds. He gave you seven and a half dimes. But he was considered an albatross to the team. He was considered garbage on the Lakers. He was considered a guy who wasn't a team player and you forced him to come off the bench and be the sixth man because he just simply didn't get the job done. But um, there was another guy that averaged 18 points at a time at one time. He pulled out seven boards and he gave you about six dimes. But he was considered the greatest sidekick of all time, and that is Scotty Pippen. So, Jeannie, what I'm saying to you is number 23, number 6, or whatever the heck number he wants to wear. He is worse than a blood walking in a Crips neighborhood. You need to get rid of him now. And you have on tape a game they played in Boston where it was no it was no Mr. Glass, it was no ballerina. And they beat the best team in the NBA by nine. Uh am I lying, sir? Jason Tatum played, Jalen Brown played, Chris Applesingus played, Drew Holiday played, yeah. And without NBA's Mr. Glass and the biggest ballerina in the history of the world, they beat the best team in the NBA by nine points. They dominated. In Boston, I may add. They, not not they, in L.A., in Boston. They dominated Boston. And they did it without Mr. Glass and the biggest ballerina known a man. Genie, blow this team up and suffer hard seasons to come because it'll be much worth it, much more well worth it if you cut, if you rip off the band aid now than if you were to let this wound fester and it becomes cancerous and then your team dies right in front of your face. You had Laker fans commenting on my post saying, see what happens when LeBron is not st- sticking the ball? Yeah, the ball. Yeah, amazingly, the ball moves, and more people are actually involved in the action. What a shock! Yes, yes. So, bronze sexuals, your goat is that, but all lowercase letters and not uppercase. And when I say goat, I mean Billy Goat, not the greatest of all time. Step with that crap. And then y'all show up at the Madison Square Garden to beat the Knicks. It is time that you get rid of AD and LeBron. They no longer fit in the framework of the Lakers organization. Lakers Nation, back me on this and have Jenny Buzz force these two out of L.A. They don't need to play in Crypto.com Arena as the home team. They need to visit the stadium playing somewhere else, playing for somebody else, but not for the Lakers. Oh, Victor says, would anyone be shocked 
if LBJ was at the next Oscars only to be slapped by Dylan Brooks with Brooks screaming, Keep my team's name, why don't you bleep them out? The worst thing about that, Victor, is instead of Chris Rock doing this, we would see LeBron go, <gasps> on the doggone stage. Embarrassing. Goodness gracious. I'm, I'm, it makes me ill talking about the Lakers. Ill. Uh, what can I say? Nothing. Ill. Oh Y'all heard me go off on Boston after that, after that game. Y'all heard me go off on Boston. There was no way in the world that should have lost that game. No, they shouldn't have lost that game. Man, there's no way it should have been dominated in that game. And the reason why I know, I actually I literally watched that game. Man, I got off work, put my headphones in on. I went straight to the sling out and put a game on TNT until I got home. Got home, watched the rest of it, and it was just like, are you serious right now? Is this what I'm really watching? I was mad that LeBron James and AD didn't play. And then watching the Boston Celtics play made it even worse. So. Oh, see? You spoke his name up, and guess who showed up? Oh, cool. Oh, yeah, we were mentioning cakes earlier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Caden Carter's. Uh, what do you think about ours? I'm sorry. Okay. No comment. All right. <laughs> oh, man. It's good to see you, cool. Speaking of the LALA team, hmm. Okay. Them Clippers. Yeah. Them, them, them Clippers, man. Um, them, them, them Clippers. They show clipping a lot of people right about now. Them, them, oh. them Clippers. They are. Woo! But them, them Clippers is clipping. Bro. And this is the main thing we always say about the Clippers. And mm-hmm. we, are, we are legit seeing it right now. If these two stay healthy, oh my goodness. Oh, they could rule the world. But seriously, they say healthy, they can they could be NBA champs. There's no question about that. And this is not and this is not the clip team we've been trying to see the whole entire time they put this team together. Yeah, and it's been four years. And they finally have the they finally have this team together. Dude, Ka- Kawhi. Man. Four years. Cool. Hey, do, does Kawhi Leonard miss? <laughs> does this dude miss? <laughs> See, I, this is this is why I'm troubled about the Clippers. I want to be excited about this team, and no, my team is the Rockets. Uh, shooting lights out, fam. I that that is my team. But playmaker knows me. It doesn't matter what sport it is. I just want to see excellence on the court or on the diamond or on the field, no matter who it is. And if and if a team does play well, I give them their props, just like I'm doing now. I mean, the Kawhi Leonard is averaging twenty four point four points per game on fifty three point three percent shooting from the field, forty five point seven percent from three point range. And eighty nine point two percent from the free throw line. When Kawhi's healthy, he's one of the best players in the game. At worst, he's one. Of, at worst, he's number five. At worst, it's just no question about it because the dude just knows how to play on both sides of the court. And obviously, when he is on, he actually energizes the rest of the team. So when you know that. You want to invest in more of that. And unfortunately, Victor, Puff Hart is not in L.A. It's literally James Harden in L.A. Yeah, he, he, I think he decided to get bloated so he can actually make his way back to L.A. He, he's, look, he's looking like James Harden again. 
Oh, ha have no fear. Oh, Lord. Cool says that silky John Stone, not Kawhi. <laughs> I will watch what they did in Miami. I'm just like... And yes, and yes, Victor, Caden Carter is a gorgeous woman. No lie to be found. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I watched that Miami game with the Clippers. I'm just like... This team is ridiculous. <laughs> when they're on, they're on. They're, they're, they're seriously on. And it, it's, it, it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to beat them when they're on. And I think the reason why you on the talk about the clothes because can they keep this up there we go because this is great it's great now we're february oh and 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 what really sparked it was the let me see it was i think it was actually uh it was uh, it was home game against the uh home game against the thunder and James Harden hit this hit this jumper, hit his normal jumper, and it was it led to a four point play. And my thought was, oh, that's great, that's wonderful. But the person that was posting it was like, see, see, did, see, you all were talking ill about old James Harden. Look what he's doing now. And I said. Quote, checks calendar. Oh. It's February. If he does the same crap in May and June, then come see me. Close quote. So, yes, they're 34 and 15 now. They're on top of the NBA's Western Conference. And if the season were to end now, they would be the number one seed. Although, yes, there are three other teams that are tied with them. Kuz Cools the Nuggets are one of those three. The reigning defending NBA World Champions. Mm -hmm. Along with the Thunder and the Timberwolves. Now, I want to say that they can continue this on their journey to a title. On their journey to possibly their first NBA Finals trip. I would love to say that. I would love to be on this mic and say to you, uh, um, Playmaker, I'd love to say to Cool, I challenge that notion of the Nuggets beating the, the Clippers in the seven-game series. I would love to say to you, um, Playmaker, that your prediction of this team winning a world championship will come true. I agree with Cool. It's not happening. And the reason why I don't think it's not happening is not going to happen Two reasons. One, I'm not convinced that Kawhi can stay healthy all the rest of this year. Because remember, the last time that the Clippers were of something, they got to the Western Conference Finals. They beat a number one seeded jazz club in the Conference Semifinals. And then they had to bow out because Kawhi got hurt and couldn't return. And the Suns just had their way with them. Nah, because Paul George, that's when Terrence Mann had his breakout. His, his coming out party. It just, that got their alley to win that game, was it? I want to say game two. Yeah, game two was when Footprint Center went berserk, yes. But that Clippers team wasn't the same with number two out. They just weren't the same. Hey, look at last year when they played Phoenix. Phoenix was dead in the water. Again, they was not the same with number two out. Until we found... And the funny thing is, we looked at Kawhi and was like, yo, Phoenix is in trouble. Phoenix is in trouble. Kawhi Leonard is busting day you know what right now. And then he and then he got his own butt busted. All of a sudden, I don't know where Kawhi Leonard will be missing the rest of the playoffs. That's what I'm saying. When did this happen? That's what I'm saying right there. I remember when we was on the program, I was like, when did he get hurt? Mm -hmm. that's when did we see him get hurt? And that's the thing. You won't see it coming. He will look as though he's fresh as a daisy, and then the next thing you know, he's fitted in a body cast. With number two out, the Clippers, 
They are wonderful eye candy for the regular season and I'll dare say the first round. But the conference semifinals and later, I wish I had my Family Feud buzzer because I would hit it right now and go, eh, no, not happening. So I hate to disappoint you 10 Clippers fans. But your team, yes, yes, all 10 of you. <laughs> not, not, a, not a whole number 10, day. You're going to be thoroughly disappointed once again because you have number two that's going to be out and like and, and, and Playmaker set it up beautifully. He can inexplicably be out. He can look like he's Will Chamberlain one game and then he is Anthony Davis the next game, but in street clothes. That's and one. Leave, and leaving you like, when did you get hurt? Mm-hmm. At least in Paul George's case, we see him get hurt. We legit see him get hurt. Yeah, yeah, Paul George, yeah, Paul George hurt gets hurt. And yeah, and it's 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 legit injuries, which it's one of the hardest luck players in not, the game is him. We're not calling Kawhi Leonard not legit, but we live no, no, no. see when Paul George get hurt. It, we 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 can we just visually see him hurt. Right. Kawhi just pops up out of nowhere. Like, when, when did you get hurt? When you just dropped forty on the Suns? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now you go. And, and he's dropping his butt on the on on a. Um, on one of the chairs next to the coach. That's number one. Kawhi Leonard will find a way to sit on the bench when the team needs him the most. Disappointing all 10 of you Clippers fans yet again. And and, I don't, and, and, and as a side note, I don't know how all 10 of you are going to fill up the new Intuit Dome when you move into it in about a couple of years. Beautiful place. But good lord, it's gonna it's either gonna be a mausoleum or you're gonna have a whole lot of Lakers fans buy a whole lot of tickets. Mm-mm-mm. But that's one. Number two, Victor, you hit the nail on the head. Stay puff hardened marshmallow man will melt under the bright lights like he got pushed into a pool of hot cocoa because when you turn the calendar to May. When I blow out birthday can right after I blow out birthday candles yet again, because my birthday is April twenty eighth. After then, that normally is when the NBA rounds out of the first round and gets into the conference semifinal round. So I would say probably between my birthday and May the fifth. So are you? It, to use, are you pretty much saying after after March Madness is officially over, look out for James Harden? Yes, yes. Yes, because he will he, he will roast people in April. He will show he will show people I am back, baby. I I'm prove I'm proving to you I should be the number one guy on the team, and he will ball out for one month, and then he will be a big ball and bounce out when you turn the calendar to May. So. Cool. You and saying that they can't beat the Clippers and uh, beat the Nuggets in the seven game series, I agree with you. They can't because so it's a couple for whatever reason. They still haven't figured out. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, you need somebody to guard 15. And they don't have anybody on that squad who can guard number 15. But that's, but that's okay, though. That's all right. I mean, I, I, know, I know of a guy in Philly that could do it. Oh. Does he even know what Denver at? Oh, he he's 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 as bad as his harm his heart. And my does he man. does he even know what Denver, Colorado is at? <laughs> does he know what Denver, Colorado is? That's he hasn't funny. played in Denver, Colorado in four years. Well, he might. Oh, well, heck, it might not just be um, leg troubles. He might have uh, altitude issues too. They ain't nobody ever said that. No. But I bet. But I bet if you push him, he'll probably say it. 
He ain't played in Denver in four years. Well, as soon as Joker, as soon as Joker go to Philly, he oh he he hype and ready to go. He he busting Denver, you know what? In Philly, don't mm-hmm. do that in Denver. And we can but, have a conversation. Mm-hmm. And, and 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 this is why I feel for Russell Westbrook. This guy is probably one of the greatest gamers I've ever seen. Definitely ain't shelters. We know that much. I mean, he will do any and everything possible to win a game. And that man literally said, Coach, I will come off the bench. Mm-hmm. He will do anything. Anything. He could be he, he'll volunteer to be a sixth man. He'll volunteer and step aside and not be the number one option. Or he'll take over if he can. I mean, he will do anything possible to win. Unfortunately, it's going to have to be up to him to do it. And I have a lot of respect for Russell Westbrook. He just doesn't have the capability of doing it by himself. He's going to need more. And it's going to resemble those those teams 2017, 2018 when he was with the, with the Thunder where he would score 30 points, pull down 10 boards and give you 10 dimes. And the rest of the team does absolutely nothing beside him. I mean, PT 13 so far is still healthy. So, And see, and and, and I'm I'm glad he is. He's going to have to need his health in order for them to go at least, at least to the conference finals. So we already know with PG, they can get to the conference finals, but he took them there. Yeah. You can get him there. Yes. Well, what you're saying is for the ultimate goal, uh, Mr. Claw need to be on that yes. court. Yes. Yes. Number two needs to be the man. He needs to be the man now. He needs to be the man in April. He needs to be the man in May. And he needs, needs to be the man in June on the court. Like he was four, five years ago. Like he was five years ago with the, with the, with the Raptors. He has to be that same person with the Clippers. That's why he signed that's why the Clippers signed him. Because they thought he could replicate what he did in Toronto there. He hasn't yet. And he's five years older. So I don't think he can. Alright. And throw Clippers in there real quick because he wants to talk about the Clippers. Now we're gonna take a break because the main event is coming. We I don't have a break, bro. Johnson as a flavor file. The man who helped create the segment begin his his own flavor file segment himself. Right after this break. Welcome to Ringside Chaos, the professional wrestling discussion segment of the Bear of Texas podcast. The only professional wrestling podcast in the world where pro wrestling is discussed passionately, with confidence, with great knowledge, and most of all, in the most sophisticated way. So brace yourselves, ladies and gentlemen, because chaos is about to be unleashed. thing with Tony Khan now being in talks to WWE, I'm going to be honest with you. I spoke to this with Ricky Litwinkowicz, a.k.a. the Master of Mayhem, and he honestly believes that me talking about Tony Khan buying WWE is a basically I'm kind of wasting my time because Ricky believes it's never going to happen. Okay. Now I now don't get me wrong, Ricky, I respect his I respect what he says. He's he could very well be correct, but I got to be honest with you, the fact that Khan is interested in supposedly buying WWE, I mean, to me that's definitely worth talking about. Now, <laughs> now, I should mention this. Shout out to Ricky, by the way. And I got to mention this, that even Jim Cornette already had something to say. And he said, and I quote, ridiculous to think that could happen, unquote. <laughs> a wrestling fan that's been super supportive of Brody Lee as a wrestler and everything that WWE could have done with him and, you know, everything that he could have shown and, you know, offered for the wrestling business. You know, for me, I, ju- I wasn't just a fan of Brody Lee himself, like in character. I strongly respected him, you know, as a human being. Like, I had a lot of respect for Jonathan Huber. You know, that's Mr. Brody Lee's real name. So, basically, I had a lot of respect for Brody Lee, 
Luke Harper, and of course, Mr. Jonathan Huber. This particular episode was about world-class championship wrestling. And the episode title is, you know, WCCW Wrestling's Lone Star Legacy. And because I am the Bear of Texas, and I do hail from the Dallas-Fort Worth area of the state of Texas, world-class championship wrestling was basically my territory as far as being a wrestling fan goes. Ladies and gentlemen, Ringside Chaos is available on all streaming platforms including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and YouTube. Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Shooting My South Special Edition. It's the Co Sports with the Z Takeover. Good gracious. Y'all, y'all, between Cole Jones and everybody in the chat, y'all. Wait to Monday. That's on. Wait to Monday. Since all y'all want to talk about cakes and stuff and finishing stories. Hashtag delay the story. Wait to Monday. Wait to Monday. Wait to, wait to Monday. That's all. Wait to Monday, darn it. Yeah. These jokers ain't want to join us last Monday when they had the opportunity. Wait to Monday. I got something for y'all. Monday. But then, that's Monday. All right? We got one thing left to do, and the man who helped create this segment is finally get the opportunity to do his solo one. Okay, it's the segment that y'all love so much, uh, surprisingly to me. But y'all love this segment. We are giving out a flagrant foul. And I think for the first time in Children Lights Out history, the team that got the last fragrant foul is getting the, it's the same team that's getting the fragrant foul this episode. Wow. So, I'm going to set the table up for Mr. Cole Johnson. Yeah, we're talking about the Milwaukee Bucks. One and four under the, I put one and five, but that should be one and four under the Doc Rivers era thus far. And remember, they fired Mr. Adrian Griffin when he was 30 and 13. Mm hmm. Okay, these are what the games they got coming up. They have Minnesota tomorrow, Charlotte, Denver, Miami, at Memphis, at Minnesota, and at Philadelphia. Mm, but, but here are their uh, standings as of right now. As you can see, they are second in scoring, eleven in the rebound, fourteenth in assists, and twenty fourth in opponents' points for the pregame. Twenty fourth. But this is not my fragrant foul. This is Cole Johnson's fragrant foul. Come, Mr. Cole Johnson, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Playmaker. I, I totally appreciate that. <clears throat> In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. The oh, sorry, my bad. I thought I, I thought I was uh, in a mosque. My bad. <clears throat> I, I need to have that calmness because I don't think I'm getting I don't think it's computing into my brain I don't think it's transmitting to me that we have a team that was 13, 30 and 13 but felt the need to get the head coach that you doted on so much gone you dealt it all so much on Adrian Griffin. This was the guy that was supposed to 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 help Giannis Antetokounmpo be the stud on defense. That he's good, but he's not considered the stud on defense. He's good though, but he was supposed to be the guy that was supposed to bring that defensive intensity to the Bucks. And and then when you saw that they well. Quite frankly, they just like the other twenty nine teams in the league are suffering from what I call basketball that sucks today. Because you have today NBA fan raving that we want to see points sco- no points scored on the board, that we believe in athleticism all over the place, 
and we believe in having 43s per game be chucked up. And you all believe in having Matador defense. What I mean, Olay! 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 Not to mention, we're handing out 70 point games like it ain't nothing. I'm so glad you said that. Bookmark what I just said. <clears throat> So I saw a chump had the nerve to say that Kobe's 81 was better than Wilt's 100. And I said to this chump, I said, fool, you're going to have fools that's going to say, and Lucas 73 is better than Kobe's 81. Get out my face with that crap. Now, I'll take the bookmark off and open the book again. <clears throat> You all were doting hard on Agent Griffin. This was supposed to be the guy that was going to bring intensity and defensive integrity to the Bucks, because for some reason that seemed to have been lost in the shuffle and lost in translation. Uh, but, um... Drew Holiday. But, um... Correct me if I'm wrong, sir. There's a player that was on the team last year that's not on it this year. Oh, um, um, two holiday for 200. And you are correct, sir. That is the biggest piece of your defensive puzzle gone. And I am not a scout. I'm not a coach. I'm not affiliated with the, in the NBA. And I can tell you that myself. I'm not even a Bucks fan. And I can tell you this. How is it that you all couldn't see this when you thought that Mr. Holiday was expendable? Oh, that's right. Because you all were drooling over the prospect of Dame Dalla having those point totals like a Joel Embiid, like a Luca, and others who were scoring 70 plus points. Ah, that's why. And I'm not saying that it was wrong for you to pick him up. I think it was great that you got Mr. Lillard on the team. He seems to be doing some wonders for them, but I'm not saying that Lillard is a bad defensive player, but he's not really known to be a defender. He has his moments, but he's more of an offensive player. So now you have a coach that you brought onto the team to be defensively stalwart, but they couldn't stop a cold. And then you embarrass the man on his way out the door in saying that you had Giannis ignoring the dude and in timeouts he and Damian Lillard were drawing up plays. you basically saying this man was worth nothing. And you dump on him before you send him out of the door. Before Five Star Stadium, a uh, Five Star Arena served as a launching pad for you to put your foot onto his hiney and shove him out the door. And all the while, you were clamoring for the man who always talked like this, and who has a big presence who has a ring, and who can't win playoff games, especially if he's up three games to one in Doc Rivers. <sighs> Lord have mercy. Uh, let me see. <coughs> I think Kobe McCain has a set to make the play. Oh, he does? Oh, my brother. <laughs> Testify. <laughs> And then he gets on the team, he leads it, <clears throat> and they proceed to be one and four. Oh, but hey, the one victory that they got, <laughs> it put him on the bench to coach the All-Star game. Oh, <clears throat> and before I forget, Wise, <clears throat> yes, Cleveland right now is the number two seed in the East. But they determined who was going to coach the NBA All-Star Game two weeks out from when the game starts. <clears throat> so, the game is February 18th. This was determined February 4th. 
and the Bucks were the number two seed then. And of course, that stupid rule, because they shouldn't. It shouldn't be him. It should be Masula. But since Masula coached last year, and teams can't have coaches coach all star games two years in a row, he seated and made way for Doc Rivers. Five games in coaching this year to be the Eastern All Star head coach. <laughs> <laughs> cool saying Doc Rotations is really trash <laughs> that, that NBA rule trash <laughs> continue on yes so so wise that's why you know, <clears throat> that's why you're not seeing uh, someone else on the bench you're seeing Doc on it personally I think Doc should actually step aside and have someone else be on that bench too, personally. That'd be me. But it's not me. So instead of seeing JB Bickerstaff, we're seeing Doc Rivers. Joe Mazzula. Okay, the stupid rule should be Joe Mazzula, but if they're going to hold fast to that stupid, dumb rule, then you can't have Mazzula. Doc Rivers step aside. You put JB Bickerstaff there. But I digress. You now have to deal with a coach. Let me see if I can remember this correctly. When he was a member of the Magic, he had a 3-1 to one series lead in the first round against the Pistons. And I think this was 2003. Yeah, I think it was 2003. This was at the height of of Tracy McGrady's powers. And I'm saying this being a Rockets fan because Tracy McGrady as a Magic, he was an absolute stud. He was good with the Rockets. He was a stud with the Magic. Oh, paper memories. Why? And then they laid an egg and the Pistons beat them four games to three. Uh. Oh, but, but it doesn't stop there. Um... 12 years later as the Clippers head coach up three games to two up three games to one they gave game five to the Rockets but up three games to two and up 19 points in the third quarter after a spectacular 360 dunk from Blake Griffin brought down the Crypto.com Arena house it was called Staples back then. I know it was called Staples. But he, that dunk brought down the house. I mean, all 10 Clippers and all 21,990 Lakers fans were just roaring with approval. This man is stuck on this ten, these 10 Clippers fans. <laughs> And you didn't seal the deal. You can say you can say, well, I mean, Chris Paul didn't play most of that series. Next man up. We don't give a, we don't give a crap. You had this team down, and you beat them. Hey, but let's stay on track because we talk about Chris Paul. Cole, Cole is going. Right, we need to stay on track. We're not going to talk about Chris Paul. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not looking at Chris Paul I because when, you, I know how you are with Chris Paul. Yeah, no, I'm not looking at Chris Paul. I mean, I, I could. I could talk about 2018, but I'm not going to because we're not talking about him nor the Rockets and actually nor the Clippers. We're focusing on Glenn Rivers. And then we get to the the 76ers days. You had a you had an inferior squad that you were you you could have crushed. Underneath your boot, in the in the Atlanta Hawks, and you had your power. You had your power forward, heighted sized point guard, in Ben Simmons, come up smaller than Mini Me, and having balls shorter 
and with less density than a cookie crumb in game seven. And that, that man all, ain't been right since. I'm sorry. That man ain't been right since. No. So yeah. So that was three years ago. Then you trade him away. You give Stay Puff Marshmallow Man on the team. They they act they they act like they didn't care about wanting to play the the, the Raptors in the first round, and they most certainly cared cared less about playing the Heat. When the Heat beat the booted them out, and it wasn't even a, it wasn't even a contest, but that was expected. The Heat were a better team than the Sixers last year. I knew it was coming. I knew it. Last year, Embiid MVP, James Harden. The reason why the the 76ers are going to go far and win it all. And the reason why it be got the MVP award. In the words of Mario Povich, that was a lie. You had the six, the Celtics down three games to two and six points in game six in your own crib. And Cool said it best. Doc Rotations, Infinity Trash. That statement couldn't have been proven more true than then. Because you couldn't hit the broad side of a barn and it got to the point where you all were scared to take shots. James Harden, who wants to actually bump into people while just chunking up a shot, didn't even want to think about taking shots. Because them calls ain't coming no more. He was looking to get bailed out. You barely went to Embiid. You didn't go to Maxi. And you just turned the ball over, turned the ball over, turned the ball over some more. And that 3-2 to two series lead turned into an embarrassing 4-3 to three series loss. Because in game seven, 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 you didn't show up. You see, you see Bucks fan, you see Bucks organization, you have a man and I have given you four instances on three different teams where he should have sealed a deal with his basketball acumen. His pedigree because he is a champion. And his ability to manage games, which sometimes is good and sometimes is piss poor. You have the ability to take advantage of that. But it almost makes me want to beg this question to ask. So the, the coach that you did have... You know, Adrian yeah, the coach you did have. I, I guess you must have thought he was a David Black 2.0 because uh, you, you decided to say, okay, well, he has no name. He he needs to go. And we suck on defense. And you brought him on the club for defense. So I guess you want to do do him like they do it like that, but but it's but it's okay. It's okay. And in my thought process, you were fine with Mike my Budenholzer. You're fine with him. I don't know why you needed to 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 get rid of him. You could say, well, he the he lost the locker room. Uh, players didn't want to hear him again. They tuned him out. I don't give a crap. You're talking about a guy who now is three years removed from giving you the first championship that organization has had since Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was named Lou Alcindor. Sorry to do this, Cole, but uh, you are ranked 24th in opponents of points per game. 24th! <sighs> Continue, sir. I don't know. That, that, that was perfect. And now you have 
Adrian Griffin going the side, going the, uh, going the way of one Frank Vogel, who when people would say, "Well, this guy is a defensive wizard," and then when he got when he got on a team that people did not want to invest playing any time on defense, he became a forgotten guy, and that's even with him winning a championship. He became a forgotten guy to the point where he became an expendable piece because people said, well, that last championship, that was LeBron who won it for him, not Frank Vogel. They won in spite of him, not because of him. And the Bucks, it was in a freaking bubble. And the Bucks wanted to get ahead of that, I guess, and say, well, we don't want people to say that the Bucks won their second championship in the last four years in spite of Agent Griffin. We want to say that they won it because of that head coach. But the funny thing is, you're going to be saying it with a different coach now. Because if the Bucks do go ahead and they do uh, lay waste to the Sixers, well, the Sixers are really not going to compete all that much. Even though they say that Embiid's only going to be gone for four weeks, that knee trouble doesn't heal in a month. So although you could probably lay waste to the Sixers, you could probably... Uh, turn back the challenge of the Cavs because they're a young team that's getting it together and it looks like that all they need to do is just get one more piece and they can simply take it from here to the championship but they're not quite there yet and the most stiff and the stiffest challenge you'll have of course the Celtics they you should, they want Miami and then there is the then there's the heat because they really could give a crap about the regular season but then they'll come on strong and see, see, Harden and Embiid, they're the opposite of the Heat. The Heat, they don't care about the regular season. Just as long as they're the eighth seed in the first round, that's all they care about. Because then they'll wreak havoc on every team they play after that. But you have to deal with three of those three of those teams to get to the finals. And more than likely, you'll probably face a team like the Nuggets or, if they're fortunate, a team like, I don't know, the Timberwolves. I doubt it because they don't have the experience to go that far yet. And if the and if you give Dame Time his first ring and you give Giannis his second, you know what you'll be saying? You'll be saying that the Bucks won that championship in spite of of Doc Rivers. Not because of him, in spite of him. So why would you want to get rid of a coach where it it really didn't matter if he was on the bench for another? That it really doesn't matter if he's on the bench. But the funny thing is though, at least Griffin was not going to mess up rotations like Doc Rivers will. Because guaranteed, the Bucks will get in a situation where the game is close, palms get sweaty, backsides get tight. Stephen A. Smith has made the program again. The nuts shrivel. And you find out that your team comes up short yet again. Because the guy on the bench does not know what piece to put in at the right time. And because the players won't have to trust in the coach, you're going to have anarchy and chaos. And you're going to have disappointment in May in Milwaukee. I don't know what you were thinking in having... Glenn Rivers be the guy who was going to man your your team that has championship aspirations with probably the hungriest player in the NBA right now and Dame Lillard to get a get a ring. But Doc Rivers is not your guy. He's not. He's not. And I hate to say it. You're going to crumble faster than the accordion does when someone folds it. And it's all because you got a guy who, when the chips are down, he doesn't believe in himself. 
that he can pull you to victory. And when you have that on the sideline, that's not good to have even when you have world-class talent like Giannis Antetokounmpo and Damian Lillard leading the team. You made a mistake, Milwaukee, in getting rid of Agent Griffin. Yes, the team sucks defensively, but guess what? The whole league sucks defensively. You panicked. And now the team's about to get worse before you hope it gets better. You better hope it does, though, before it's too late. Oh, and you got to deal with Chris Middleton being injured yet again. The Bucks version of Mr. Glass. Mm. Sucks to be you. And you're not even defending Eastern Conference champs. That's what makes it even worse. Mm. Okay. <laughs> That was the flagrant foul by Mr. Cole Johnson. I definitely would be cutting that one. <laughs> I, I, thought it was, I thought it was being nice. <laughs> That's the first time I actually got to sit back and actually watch somebody else do a flagrant foul instead of me. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, that. he's a nicer version of me. Yeah, you know, <laughs> if I'm doing a flagrant foul, isn't, you know it's a problem. Nice and we gonna have to address. Yes, okay, I, I just, um, I, I just thought they, I just thought they made that move as a panic, as a panic decision. Is in there for you? <laughs> oh Lord, Victor Locke. He says Embiid and Harden, the only two players I know that switched phone companies while on the floor. Day Street switched to Shadow Realm Wireless, known to disappear. Faster than cookies on Christmas morning. Knees get weak. And arms get heavy. Soon, the upheaval of mild spaghetti will commence. And, uh, I think Koo had something for you. A little more appropriate for Mr. Chris Middleton. <laughs> Chris Middleton, a.k.a. Street Clothes Chris. And he'll be wearing those street clothes for another season yet again. All right. Before we get out of here, I know it's Super Bowl weekend and y'all having hmm. problems trying to get to the game Sunday because it's on the Victor, many me on a step ladder look taller. You right about that. I'm yeah. sorry. But um, tonight we got a double head on ESPN. Speaking of the 70 sessions, mm-hmm. they have the Golden State Warriors coming into town. Let's begin our ESPN double head. And afterwards, the aforementioned Clippers are hosting the New Orleans Pelicans. Poor Warriors. Oh, Zion. Stay off the gumbo, son. I'm sorry, my bad. <laughs> That's why I didn't say nothing. Because I knew what I said, Pelicans. The word Zion Wilson was going to come out somewhere. <laughs> I just knew it. <laughs> and then uh, tomorrow, TNT has your double header. Kyrie Irving back at Madison Square Garden to take on the New York Knicks. Boom. Please. And then speaking of the reigning, defending NBA World Champions Denver Nuggets, they'll be facing your game and the Los Angeles Lakers in Tinseltown. The throne them. So, Tonight, tomorrow, you got some basketball. They help you, they help you make it to the weekend, so you can get ready for Super Bowl Fifty. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, mm-hmm. any final words, Mister Cole Johnson, of your takeover on something like so? Well, firstly, thank you for providing this for me. I didn't even ask for the platform for a takeover, so. This was a, a pleasant surprise and a treat. Thank you. Uh, I totally appreciate that. I do not take the fact that you decided to give me your platform to do this lightly at all. So firstly, thank you, Playmaker. Uh, secondly, 
now that we are at Super Bowl Sunday coming up, the NBA is going to now become front and center for the next three months in terms of, well, next four months, in terms of straight-up coverage on whatever chosen field that we're watching. So now I'll, normally it's a... T- I would say longer than that. Yeah, so now normally it's, a, well, yeah, about four, if I forget. They do have, like, the draft that comes after the, the finals. I don't want to talk about that. And the free agents, and the free agent stuff, too. I don't want to talk about that either. I was talking about the Olympics. Oh, Lord. <laughs> okay. So, I'm <laughs> sorry. For the, I'm sorry. Yes, I did. For the next six months. I totally forgot about this. Is a, this is an Olympic year and a leap year. I should have known. With all the presidential planning that I have done on my job, I should know. This is also an Olympic year. And yes, I forgot. Paris. Yes. Bring the gold. And retire LeBron. I'm sorry. My bad. But, um. We're running, we're running third and coming to home for Super Bowl Sunday. So, of course, this will mean the on-the-field stuff of the NFL is over and the attention of the NBA will be front and center from Monday on till probably the first week in August. Well, first weekend in August. And now I, I, I have this to, to say before I do decide to uh, finish and just see the the show back to you playmaker NBA I want you to address the issue of defense your league plays no defense it prioritizes three point shooting and penetration pause far too much there is two facets of the game to play, not one. Find a way to have these players be more invested on the defensive end than they have been the last five to ten years. It is atrocious that we've been seeing many of these players score 60 and 70 points in a, se- in a, in a game this season. And I am sick of seeing 130, 140, and 150 point games. And we're not talking about the All-Star game. We're seeing these points being scored in. We ain't talking overtime either. And we're talking regulation. Please let this game get better. The defense needs to step up and be more present. Otherwise, this game is going to spiral further into something that we don't want to root for nor recognize. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. On this special edition of Shooting Lights Out, the Cold Sports Takeover with Mr. Cole Johnson. I hope y'all enjoyed it, because, uh, yeah. Yeah. He, uh, he, he said he had some stuff to get off his chest, and I didn't let him get it off his chest, and I'm glad I did. So, uh, until next time, people, enjoy your week. Enjoy Super Bowl Sunday. All right? Uh, y'all will see me back probably Monday. Depending on how things go, but I already know. You will see me talking wrestling Monday, I can guarantee you. That talk with Marlis Wrestling with my good brother who's in the chat, Kuma McCain. And we're going to continue our discussion about a certain person not getting the opportunity to finish the story at WrestleMania. But there's more layers to peel off from that that I didn't touch on. Mm-hmm. I wanted to save some meat on the bones. Yes. Try, try it out. Mm-hmm. But there's some other stuff we can get into that happened on the past on stuff that's going to happen this week on wrestling. Mm-hmm. But for basketball wise, uh, it is February. Mm-hmm. We're inching closer and closer to conference tournament play. We're getting closer to Champs Week. And you know what happens after Champs Week? Selection Sunday and March Madness. We're only about a month away from March Madness. So get ready. And just for a side note, can anybody beat UConn, please? <laughs> can anybody beat them? That is neat to know. Can anybody beat them? 
they haven't lost a game since they became number one. So that's all I gotta say. Until then, enjoy yourself. Have a wonderful time. I'll catch y'all later. You've done great. But you can't stop here. You can't stop now. You gotta keep going. Through all your trials and your tribulations, you gotta keep pushing. Now, finish your campaign. Yeah, gotta get it out the mud. That's the only way to win. Who am I to point the finger like I never ever seen? Been through the ups and downs like the letter in. They don't let you through the door. Better kick it again. Cause that's the only way to win. That's the only way to go. Gotta get it out the mud. Gotta get it out the flow. Cause that's the only way to go. Let's go. Thank you for tuning in today's episode. If you want to follow the podcast, you can follow it on all streaming platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and a whole lot more. This has been Shooting the Lights Out. Masterpiece.